Hi, I'm uh, Jason K4APR, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a programming cable for the Tate TM8105 series. Um, the uh, the Tate uses a serial interface, but the pinout is different. Um, so I will put this up on the screen. I'll just show it right here. You can see the standard uh, uh, serial pinout would be two, three, and five. You can see that the the Tate actually uses uh, 2, 4, and 9, and uh, we're going to uh, pin this cable out correctly for that pin out to, uh, to match what the uh, Tate radio needs for programming. So let's get right into it. Um, the basic things you're going to need is a, uh, an FTDI uh, uh, USB uh, serial cable, and I like this version because it already has all the wires broken out and labeled so we know what's what. We only are going to need three of these wires. We're actually going to cut these short and uh, modify this slightly uh, for the cable. You'll need a uh, DB9 female. So this is the uh, this is the end that would plug into the radio. So it's a DB9. I like to use a solder cup style. Um, to do this properly we're going to use some uh, heat shrink uh, and then we've got some little uh, small pieces of heat shrink that will uh, go over the three individual points that will solder and then uh, any good cable should have a back shell or some kind of uh, some kind of a uh, cover over the connector itself uh, to make it um, not only protected but also uh, keep the uh, keep everything nice and neat and keep anything from breaking off the back of the of the uh, connector so all right let's uh, let's get going with this okay so first thing we need to do is identify the three wires that we'll need for the cable we're going to need transmit receiving ground um, I've already gone ahead and um, separated these out before I started recording um, in this particular so some of the FTDI cables are going to use a different color scheme uh, this particular one uh, this particular one actually uses a flat wire some of them use a, a round uh, round cable uh, not all of them will work. You, know, you just need to uh, just make sure that you're uh, using the correct uh, correct the uh, uh, wires for the particular function. So in this case, uh, black is ground, blue is transmit, and white is our receive. So uh, first thing we're going to do is since we don't need these others, we're going to cut these other three off. Now. Uh, I showed at the beginning of the video that I had some larger heat shrink here to put over. Um, this particular cable, they've actually done that, which is kind of nice. So we're just going to reuse uh, the heat shrink that they've already put on this cable. Uh, I'll see if you can see that on the camera there. Um, yeah, they've already done that, so we're, we're going to reuse that. That's, that's handy. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these a little bit shorter um, for, the, uh, for, for making this up. Um, Let's see, we'll come about there, I guess. And I'm going to hang on to those because this is our color code, so to speak. We know that, uh, you know, what colors we need for what function. Um, and then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, strip the ends of these. And I don't have to strip much off at all. Just a little, maybe about a, oh, maybe, a, um, maybe almost an eighth. Doesn't have to be very much at all. So I'm just going to strip a little off each end of these. Okay, there we go. And then um, I like to pre-tin everything. So what I'm going to do, and here's a little trick. If you take your cutters or something like that and you just set them in the jaws like this. And make sure I'm keeping this on camera. And the jaws like that, it will actually hold everything in place for you. Um, let's see. Okay, we're just going to pre-tin this. Doesn't need a lot, just just a touch of solder. Just to pre-tin these wires. Just like that. Okay. Alright, now that we've pre-tinned, we're ready to solder to the uh, connector. So let me set up and we'll uh, do that next. Okay, I'm set up in my uh, vise here. I've got a, um, this is just a, an old test board I had with a DB9 uh, mail connector on it. I use these for holding these uh, DB9s nice and secure. Uh, so it's a lot easier to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to pre-fill these solder cups. Uh, we'll start with uh, two and four on the top. 
and then we'll uh, flip around and do nine on the back on the bottom so I'm gonna do two and four I'm gonna flip this over and we'll fill in nine like that okay now nine is ground so one of the things you can't forget is you gotta put your heat shrink on so I'm just gonna put the one on for ground for the second since that's the only one we're doing on the bottom here and then the easy thing to do when you pre-tin like this uh, this makes uh, this makes soldering stuff like this a lot easier it's a lot faster so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to heat the cup up again and then I'm going to insert the wire and let go and just like that that has been soldered now so let me flip this back over like that and then um, so pin 2 is our transmit and uh, let's see what did we say that's blue hey this is Jason from the future in this part of the video, I made a big mistake. I forgot to clarify that the transmit from the FTDI cable goes to the receive pin of the Tate Radio programming port, and the receive pin or wire from the FTDI cable goes to the transmit pin of the Tate programming port. So, don't do what I did in the video. Swap it up, and you should be good to go. Okay, back to the video. Blue. So conveniently, blue is already on the uh, left side here, so this will make this very easy. We'll get our heat shrink put on there. And we'll do the exact same thing as we did with the ground. So I'm going to heat up the solder cup, insert the wire, come off, just like that very quick this reduces the uh, this reduces the chance of melting the uh, the insulation back on the wire it may still melt back slightly but it's going to be very minimal if you do it this way okay now let's do the receive heat up wire in there we go all three have been soldered on as you can see there okay and the only thing left to do on this is the uh, to uh, heat this heat shrink, and uh, I'll do that here in just a second. All right, I uh, I just use a regular uh, paint stripping heat gun, and uh, makes quick work. And as you see, it doesn't take much at all. There's the heat shrink on. And now we know that those uh, solder joints are, are well protected and we don't have to worry about anything shorting or anything like that. And that's all that is that is to that. Okay, so for the uh, the hood, I like to use these. Um, I will uh, I'll put the part number in the uh, description down below. I like these a lot because they actually have the cable clamp built in. So this little piece here, it's two screws, we'll screw it on the bottom side and actually cable clamps the uh, cable into the uh, hood itself and uh, it's very secure uh, that's why I really like these so uh, one trick is when you put this together you want to make sure that this clamp clamps on the the uh, the insulation part of the of the cable including that heat shrink that was already on there like I said if the heat shrink hadn't already been on there I would have added that but um, we didn't have to in this case so uh, as you can see this this cable clamp uses a couple of screws and uh, let me get both screws in here to hold this in it doesn't have to be super tight it just uh, we just want it snug uh, so the cable cannot pull out of the uh, of the uh, hood but tight enough you know, tight enough that, that it's not going to pull out, but not so tight that it's going to actually damage the wires in there. So, All right, and uh, so these are a little long, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just fold them back slightly like this. As you can see, the connector fits right in there. And, uh, and then this also comes with thumb screws. And then uh, this is a clamshell style, and it just snaps together. There's no screws to hold the thing together. It just it snaps together. It's secure. 
and there we go there is our completed cable now I'm going to take you over to the computer and I'll show you what uh, changes we have to make to the FTDI controller in the connector or in the uh, in the cable itself to uh, to set this thing up for programming. Okay, I've moved over to my computer and uh, I'm going to show you how to set up this um, FTDI controller. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug our cable in, and uh, we should see in Device Manager pop up a USB serial port device. This particular one came up as COM7, so we know that uh, we have a proper properly installed driver and the cable is technically working uh, as far as the, um, the operating system is concerned. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start this little program down here called FTProg. Now this is a free utility you can download off of the FTDI website. Um, so we're going to start that up and this will take a few seconds because it's it's in there scanning looking for um, pro for devices and there it is okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to this scan and parse and we're gonna click that and what that's gonna do is it's gonna look for any FTDI devices now of course they found only the one that we have plugged in and you can see the device comes up here with the chip details and everything but the only thing we are worried about is we're gonna hit this plus sign on, next to the hardware specific and we're going to click on invert RS-232 signals. And then all we need to do is check the invert transmit and invert receive. Those are the only two things we need to change. And now we're going to go up to this little lightning bolt and we're going to program that change or those changes into this cable. So we click program. And as soon as you see program successful and it goes back to ready, you're done. That's all you have to do now. So we're going to close that. And I'm going to close this out. And now the cable is ready to be used. So you would fire up your uh, Tate software. Um, and uh, in my case, it's the, uh, the A100 programming software. And select the COM port 7, or in your case, whatever that COM port is. And you're ready to go. And you should now be able to program, or read and program uh, the Tate TM uh, A100 series radios. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's all there is to making a programming cable for the uh, for the Tate radios, or at least for this uh, series radios with the uh, serial programming port on the front. Uh, as you can see, I've got mine uh, plugged into uh, one of my data radios here, and uh, and it's ready to be uh, read and programmed. And uh, that's all it takes. So uh, good luck making your cable. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, drop that down below uh, in the uh, comments section, and I'll try to answer uh, any questions I can. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you in the next video.